legend says that during the Ping Pong dynasties, some 2,000 years ago, Emperor Pong Yang Fu, disillusioned with mass-produced Shaolin monks, left and established his own smaller boutique monastery. Located at the other side of Lin Mountain, the Pongling Monastery quickly established itself as a refuge for Shaolin monks who had lost their way. Many were drinking problems. In its early days, the monastery became prone to random attacks by wild animals, mostly angry ducks. As a result, the monks began to practice Pong Fu, a variation of Kung Fu and precursor to modern day ping pong as a means of self-defense. They needed small objects that could fly through the air at great speed, that could be used to repel the attacks from these tenacious, flying beasts. Hence, the ping pong ball and ping pong bat were invented. Balls could be hit at the swooping bird, and this proved to be a very successful means of self-defense. After the ducks were defeated, Pong Fu remained as a Pong Ling training method and a means of discipline for the monks. Anything to stop the wayward monks from drinking. This later developed into the game we now know as Ping Pong. Pong Fu has no shortcuts to becoming a master, only through endless practice, extreme effort and total devotion can one fully harness the power of Pong Fu. The reward for becoming a master is reserved only for the elite of the elite. One of the few remaining modern day masters of Pong Fu is Mr. Pong Yagi. He is well versed in the ancient ways and considered a living legend of Pong Fu. Many star ping pong players go to Pong Yagi when training for big events and his record at training Olympic Pong champions is unmatched. Today, two aging Dutch table tennis players have flown to this remote part of Tibet to train with Pong Yagi in the hope of representing the Netherlands and to finally win the doubles tournament at the Pong Network's Pong Olympics. The first thing to learn in Pong Fu and the most fundamental stance is the crouching tiger hit that bloody duck. As a basis for standing firm, even when the ducks attack, Hong Fu practitioners must practice this stance throughout their life at least two hours every day. Freestyle Pong Fu movements improve agility, flexibility, and keeps one in readiness for anything that may come. Slapping water with the bat develops mental toughness and allows for stronger hitting of the pong ball. This helps the Pong Fu practitioner learn that willpower is more important than physical strength. Pong Ba, literally hands and baked beans, is a way to develop delicate ping pong player's hands and fingers. What seems a gentle pursuit of pushing one's hands into baked beans after only a short time becomes almost unbearably painful not to mention quite gross. For the Pong Fu devotee, it is a pain that must be experienced regularly for up to an hour at a time until the fingers are strengthened and hands nicely moisturized with baked bean juice. With the blindfold on, the Pong Fu practitioner cannot see and must feel where the ball is. This is done until the 10,000 consecutive bounces are done. If the ball falls, it resets and the count must start again. This can take many hours. Repetitive training is the fundamental methodology behind Pong Fu. Repeat, repeat and repeat again until your actions 
a second nature. Pong on, pong off, an ancient ritual passed on from generation to generation, designed to improve synchronization of mind and bat, the key to mastering the doubles game. Hitting a pong ball on one leg improves balance and coordination. The old master puts the devotees to the test by making them do this for six grueling hours. Mr. Pong Yagi bows. Pong Fu training is over. They are ready. Yeah.